Hey there, Jorah here, and welcome back to another premiere. Yes, premiere, which means once again we are flying in the real world. Today, flying with Ryanair, aka Lauda, on a flight from here in London Sunset to Jeszczowska in Poland. Now, I've not been here in about two, three years since the start of the pandemic, so I'm excited for this trip. I've not seen my grandparents now in a long, long time, and it's uh, it's, it's been long awaited. It's been long awaited. So, as I said, books are on their flights, going to go there for two nights, because I've got to go to work on Wednesday. Um, if I don't go to work on Wednesday, I'd be a, a lot longer to take that for now. But I'll be sure I'll get another opportunity to go later this year, even to uh, head back. So, head to Poland, go to my grandparents, sort out some documents and paperwork and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, of course, going by flight. Um, so, again, it's a premiere, not a video. So, for those of you who are new to the channel and don't know what these are, basically, whenever I fly in the real world as a passenger, I will record a video alongside it. So that instead of tracking me on, say, the IVA Webby, track me on flight around instead. So uh, that's all pre-planned, that's all prepared. Um, flying in a Ryan, well, in a Ryan A320, flying in a Lauda A320. I'll be flying on the board. I should be Telco for set craft all ready to go. Uh, Nine Hotel Lima Mike Tango. Sadly, there's no livery for it in um, Flight Sim, but uh, yes, it's not an aircraft I've been on before. The only Lauda I've been on was uh, actually this one. So Nine Hotel. Um, Lima Oscar Oscar, although back then it was known as uh, it was OE Oscar Echo for uh, Austria. So it was a former Austrian aircraft with uh, Lauda. After the Ryanair takeover, they removed the airline down to Malta, and well, now it serves as a it's kind of like a, a backup airline for Ryanair. So whenever they've got a bit of a, sh a fleet short haul or they just need to get some aircraft made to be, they'll use Lauda aircraft in their place essentially just to keep the company moving. So it's uh, it's an interesting setup. But it's actually done some pretty well. I mean, it means that Ryanair's now in 18 A3, sorry, it's 28. So 18 or 28, but they're in 18 or 28 uh, 320s in their uh, family. So, uh, yeah, the departure about 20 minutes. Let's jump in the cockpit and set the aircraft up. Uh, this aircraft has just completed a Shannon run. So, the, for the 15th of May, it's on Santa to Sofia, Sofia to London, uh, London to, sorry, Sha London to Shannon, Shannon to London, and then uh, Jezio, uh London to Jezhov, Jezhov to London, so three legs today, uh, four actually, so Dublin, no, Dublin yesterday, Sophia, Shannon, and Jezhov, so three runs today. Uh, right, so on the ground, we're basically turn around set up, let's prepare the aircraft for our departure, shall we? So, we're going to pull the new flight plan from Simbrief, we're going to, uh, we'll start fueling actually, because that's going to take a little bit of time. So requirement fuel today is going to be uh, 7.2, yeah, 7,200 uh, kilos. So looks like fuel that's fine. 7,200. Start the fuel in about five minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, we've got our flight plan here as well, so we can go through that as well. The I should need to check what is that as cost next for. Uh, the A320, because I don't actually know off the top of my head. I don't think it's going to have any breathers online. If not, we use the standard uh, Ryanair. So Ryanair need to use 6 for their 737s. Uh, yeah, okay, that's fine. So cruising attitude like level 390, that's all fine. And then our flight plan routine is just like that. Cool. So, uh, flight number is going to be we're in there, 7 November Zulu. Costing next 6, increasing altitude to flights level 390. So, go into place. I can also add the winds if I really want to. Um, yeah, you know what? We'll do that. First things first, we'll get passengers aboard both on Pack X and uh, the aircraft. So, go from Simbrief, that's a Jeshov, 2136, 39,000. Two hours and five minutes on the clock. Departure in approximately what time now is 40, 49. Uh, yeah, no, so 45, that's fine. So, uh, 50, actually, got 15 minutes to schedule departure. Great. Uh, A320, again, this is a bit way, I don't know, do I put markers as 20 Neo or just normal 20? Because technically, it's a normal 20. On them, we'll do that. Uh, boarding music, I've got louder boarding music. I believe they still use the louder playlist, not the Ryanair playlist. And definitely for the safety briefings, no A220 um, recording. Uh, go to the snack service, no meal service, customs are required. The flight number will continue. Let's just start boarding the flights. 
Uh, come back to the wings in a second, then to the menu, to Atsu, AOC. How fast I remember how to fly the uh, 320? I've done a lot of. Uh, ooh, hang on. Let's uh, do the old routing. Um, EGSS to the uh, PRZ. Sorry, that's the uh, Shannon route from last leg. Call that. Uh, yeah, so this is the Shannon route from last time. I need to change that now to our current flights. Sierra Sierra to Echo Pepper Romeo Zulu. That's more like it. Um, right, that's the menu. That's to AOC. Wait and balance while up to the message to receive. We're going to request everything from Simbrief. Let's start boarding. Thank you very much. Free text. Sorry, it's not free text. That's uh, received from IVA. Yeah, that one. Cool. So, Santa said to Jeshul, print out the weather. Back to translation. Plugging our winds, so climbing winds, is that all plugged in. So I'm going to do it, kind of not going to do it for departure, I'll also do it for um, altitudes 10,000, 20,000, and then top of climb. So 10,000, so it's 200, stroke 21, stroke 100. Uh, then it's 226 to 26. 200, and finally 265 34, 39. Next phase, cruising winds, cruising winds are going to be 265 34. And the next phase. Uh, descent winds, we'll get to descent winds once we're at a later session of flight, that's fine. Right, flight plan. Starting off with uh, Charlie in November. Back to. From there, we fly the Papa Fort Fort to Ratslow. Mike 197. To Red Fox, Nima six two zero to Tatcha, Mike six loads. Take your time. Yeah, it's not quite as instant uh, <laughs> as the PNTG just is it? There we go. Um, from there, then Blood Rex to Larret. So I, I do like the PNDG. 737s are very, very good aircraft. Chimps 700, not an 800. I definitely want to have the uh, return leg for this, but uh, you get some, you don't get some. 737, 800 will come out soon as well. I don't think that'll take super long for it to uh, publish. Alright, Nassis. From Nassis, then fly the Lima 986. So, final waypoint of Luxor. Right, great passengers. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ryanair operated by Ladder Flight 2136 from Sunset to Zheshov. Flight time today, around 2005 minutes. We are just trying to the aircraft final stage of departure, and should be airborne soon. A little bit cloudy on the departure out of London today, so it's a little bit turbulent, but as we ride into Poland, things should start to grow up a little bit. Still clouds reported, with around 17 degrees centigrade as current airport's temperature. Thank you for choosing Ryanair. We hope you enjoyed your flight today. Sit back, press your flight. Any questions, please do have improved. So I'll end up uh, talking on top of the, uh, the cabin crew there. <laughs> Lighting in. Right, uh, so that's our routine plug in. That's the flight plan. Uh, no, it's not quite what I want. I'll go to Shazation. See that I'm slowly, slowly remembering my way around the 27C. Right, uh, zero fuel weight and block fuel perfect. So our zero fuel weight is going to be 59.5. 
Center gravity currently at 21.8 and block fuel 7.2, yeah, 7.2. Uh, so it's all plugged in, all looking good. Let's listen to the ATIS mid part trail of Santa today. Winds one one zero at eleven knots. Sky clear. Dew point one one degrees Celsius. Visibility one zero kilometers. Altimeter one zero one seven. Winds one one zero at eleven. Cool. Uh, so no tea at the moment. Going to be passing in. Flying on Unicorn initially, we may get, well, so I'm Sam Stoken online now, so I may get some of the Netherlands. Uh, which means we're straight to us, well, so it's cruising altitude, so I'll take 9,000 feet. What I need to do now is pop open the performance calculator. We calculate our departure performance. Also from our departure route as well, so expecting runway 22 today. Uh, sorry, correction, runway 04. Uh, runway 04 on the Clacton 5 2 departure. Fifth long taxi ahead of us. So that's, that's all good. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's our routing set. As she's all set, and then the routing, we can clear the discontinuity, so from Clacton straight to Ratslow. Head over to fan modes. Let's have a look at the routing. So, set itself will be fine, no complaints about that. Cracks and straight to Ratslow, flies along Netherlands through Germany and into Poland. And it's just continuity see before we hit our approach into Jeshaw, yeah, sure, which we're going to plug in the approach routing. So, testing runway 27 on the Luxart to Bravo today. Come on board, thank you very much. Uh, performance, right. So, currently at Echo Golf Sierra Sierra, call the other information, runway 4 for departure, get the meet up, drive conditions, anti-class not required, takeoff weight is 67, centre of gravity will be forward, flex for takeoff, uh, config 1 flaps, air condition will be fun. So, 145, 145, 146, flex 7, at 1, 3, 2, Perfect. One four five, one four five, one four six. That's one. Flex temp six seven, and transition altitude six thousand feet. Transition one three two four. So that's our departure configured, routing set up, FMS ready to go. I think I'm quite happy with the uh, setup. So we're going to start the APU, should we do that a little bit earlier? This comes on. So it's about five, six minutes, so we're being alright for time at the moment. Hopefully we'll be ready to uh, push back quite soon. Yeah, the has disappeared, so definitely done the fueling. That's the uh, your oven starter ticker for the uh, for the APU. So if you're just joining us, I am in real life at Sunset Airport and about to depart in this aeroplane, A20, louder colours to Yeshua. Uh, received the message, that's the other message I said by asked, that's the last recent data, yes. But if you're interested in weather in China, it's uh, cloudy, but slightly better than London. <laughs> so, uh, one thing to actually is V2146. No, two, sorry, extra uh, does that automatically for me. Cool. AP bleed available. Sun or power comes off. And right there, three, uh, 2 on 3 6 is ready for push. So the Unicom as well, so currently 7 6 4 left. 
Attacking to runway 04, we're going to need to. Uh, that be. Grab the departure chart, so we want the uh, taxi wise at Stansted. Alright, so pushing back on to Delta, we Delta, Hotel, holding Hotel 1. And our runway 04. Johnny Moon, November 5 Sierra departure. And that's all do. So, okay, that's our departure chart, or that's our ground chart. So, pushing back onto Delta, thanks to the hotel, that's hotel one. The NF reference. Uh, these are the, this is our departure chart we're looking at earlier. So, passing out uh, from 04, make a right and turn, basically head straight out into Europe. So quite quick uh, way up that one. Then confirm. Uh, Sand 64 left, Delta Hotel and Hotel one, from 04, Crash Fancy other departure chart. So that's all configured. That's us ready to go. Right, uh, push back, push back, pre plan, push back. So we slightly longer taxi today, but should cut down on our air time, departing straight out to the uh, east. Press push back, let's get ready to go. This is ground, stand by. So, ground uh, sniper and sales departure. See, I don't really like the enemy uh, <laughs> people. They're not quite GSX level, but certainly, okay, certainly good. Let's get to nose. Least. Parking brakes are released. Commencing pushback. You can start the engines in sequence. It will start in the sequence. Right. We need to start engine number two. For how that's done in the A320, there's nothing up here. It's just a case of a blicky to ignition and engine two starts. I remember my 320, honest. <laughs> Alright, I'm on to the end two. <clears throat> then I hit around 24, start the fuel flow, and the exhaust temperature will go up, and the N1 will also increase. Power up increases. 23, 24, fuel flow starts, exhaust temperature increases. Start start up so far, wait for it to come available, and then start up engine number one. That's the uh, generator switch over, and cool. Engine available. To start, parking brake set. Let's get on to the N2. Starts, temperature increases. Again, just make sure that the temperature isn't hitting into the red zone. That does then engine shuts off. So far, looking good. Also, wait for the engine pressurization system to, uh, well, 
be fixed. Because at the moment it's flashing, so then it's too high. In reality, sometimes like the uh, HMX simulates yet, but I'm sure at some point they will do. Because again, level of aircraft is fantastic. Hopefully not too far away from the um, Phoenix as well, that's new just around the corner. For now, not looking too bad this, not looking too shabby. Engine 1, should be available shortly. There's the generator. And engine 1, available, cool. So, give you a few more seconds. Switch off the lead and the APU. Let's turn the beacon lights on, sorry, ground crew. Uh, that's all set, that's all set, fine. Yeah, that is perfect. Do a quick check, make sure everything is up and running. Elevators up and down. Ailerons left and right. Rudder left and right. Spoilers up. And spoilers down. Perfect, that's all good. Uh, flat down to position one. Going to activate positive wind shear and TAR right. That's the stats lowering. Taxi lights set. Park brake released. So this is runway zero four. Now to Unicom at the taxi to runway 04 by Dota Hotel Hotel 1. So we are going to taxi basically the full length of the runway here at Sunset. Not the uh, quickest route, but hey ho, <laughs> it's what we need to do. Uh, soft the icing, the icing required. Oh, they're dimming the lights, are they? I think it was uh, that, they also. I'm looking at the terrain. I think the terrain's. Some of the terrain there. That's not like that, is that? I don't know. I'm gonna just drops off the uh, taxiway there. That's again not something I normally do. I could be wrong. Just uh, never really noticed it like that. The aircraft just landed. Uh, no, it's a windsock. <laughs> it's a pilot. Got to be visual. You've got to spot traffic every time you move around. The jet two aircraft. Is that jet two aircraft? Jet to aircraft, can't even stand. It's quiet this morning, but hey ho, it's Sunday at 10 a.m. I think get too many people on these uh, networks. Um, the web I think there actually was an arrival earlier on, it sounds like yes, there was. Well, that jet to there actually. Which one was that? Yep, uh, no, I actually wrote taxi lights. Let me forget the uh, nav lights. Thank you, cabin crew. As we straighten up, we will then switch over to take off checklist. Brakes that's to max. Signs are on. Cabin checked. Uh, spoilers armed. That's in takeoff position. Take off big test. Take off with normal. Thank you very much. Ignition. Right, all that's left is landing lights, T cast, and takeoff. Three twenty definitely runs away from you. Uh, I mean, this is Texan Idol power. I mean, three twenty near, of course. The um, TFM uh, Leap One A engines are very powerful, even on the um, Idol. But compared to the uh, compared to the PMT seventy seven, where fair enough, ground steering handling is really sensitive. But at the same time, the uh, taxi is really slow. This is the opposite. This is a bit more sluggish to control. Feels really good in the hand, but uh, taxiing. Cool, good luck keeping this thing under controls.
What's that? Ah, oh, thank you, NHS. Very nice. <laughs> I've not heard that detail before. So they used to have also the um, censored logo at the end of the tank to the helipad at the end, but that doesn't get um, maintained anymore, so it's basically just slowly disappeared over the years. Now you just have the uh, logo of the Manchester Airport Group um, and then buy it. That. Okay, just watch our speeds, that goes super fast. Yeah, it was just uh, here, they just have the Apple logo. We go to like Google Earth for. Actually, yeah, Google Earth can use the history slider. You can see it kind of deteriorate over the years. It's still kind of there, but again, not really not really legible anymore. Nature has uh, regained it. Cabin crew, please take your seats for departure. Right, I'm going straight into takeoff. Uh, sort of fine, drive source is auto. Going to set transponder to on. And, uh, yeah. Let's get out of here, shall we? So 40. Engines one too stable. X1067. Uh, SRS runway. What's thrust blue? Sets. It's knots. Hundred knots. E one rotates. Lost it right. Gear up. I've not done the entry in so long, I've forgotten the, uh, <laughs> the call outs. Let's follow the flight director, throttle reduce to climb. What I'm doing basically is getting the aircraft the centre of the uh, horizon, the artificial horizon to one of the crosshairs on the flight director. Do that for a short bit, and when I'm happy, switch over to the uh, autopilots. Reset the ground spoilers. and snaps can be attracted. Aircraft is in control. Cool. 
All that's left for me to do now is sit back, relax, enjoy the flight. We continue our way to work. Yeah, sure. See if I can speed up to 250 knots. It's going to hold up to 4,000, I think it will do. I must admit, I can't remember where the um, altitude intervention, I believe it's going to be under. Yeah, I like the 20. I'm not centered on where it's an intervention bus, where you just basically push it and it will continue to climb. The Airbus requires certain input into the uh, FMS, which I don't actually quite know what it is. Uh, holding 4,000, it will continue to climb in about, well, zero miles. So, light. Do you hold us uh, 4,000 in that? What I can then do is we can then just fly direct to Plankton, and that should just bypass the. Uh, well, up to 6,000 at least. Uh, in that case, I would set that to. There is a way you can do it. I just don't know how you do it in the uh, 73. Do you know how you do in 320? Sorry, I have to do it in 73. That's the intervention. Not the end of the world if I don't do it. Okay, so we'll go direct to uh to rats low. Passing through six thousand feet. Sand out to set. see some showers here in the uh, UK at the moment. The weather not superb, but not terrible. So some other parch parts are pretty clear. Very shortly about to leave the UK. You see the uh, top of the Thames Estuary in the horizon. Ten thousand feet, then lights off and retracted. We'll need to see about sign on a little bit longer since I'll be, I'll be able to clear the weather first. As soon as we clear the weather, then we can turn things off. But just wait for the uh, little spike there to end. Going over Colchester very shortly. Colchester leaving the UK over Felixstowe. And the actual flight time itself, so we've got about an hour and 45 from start to finish. It's not the shortest flight in the world. Hopefully, enough to uh, kind of fill time talks about stuff. Yeah, we'll get, to, we'll get, we'll, 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 we'll find stuff to talk about when we get there. For now, keep on our climb outs. So far, so good. Focus on the aircraft uh, performance. Flying into Ratslow, Ratslow. I should have half another route. So, uh, flying over towards Ratslow, Ratslow, Redford, Thatcher, Thatcher, then across, across through to Germany, Blaret, Blaret, uh, Milgu. Last crosses the border into Poland, and it's gig out, uh, Sarab. Studol and looks like we're going to enter the start so we're going to fly south of the airport and then turn into land runway to seven side. <clears throat> and from there, it's like a one hour drive to my grandparents' place. Cool, is that livery? <laughs> I'll give it a like, but I don't know, 
Inter interesting stuff, interesting stuff. Uh, I got a photo out of uh, Netherlands here. Yeah, of course, it's a PNDG 700 KLM with ground surfaces all active. And that PNDG really is game changing. That's nice. That's P3D. Is it? No, sorry, it's Microsoft Flight Sim. It does have their lighting, it's different. It's not bad, that. Yeah, I'll give you a light for that, it's not bad at all. That's a, uh, it's just RV 737. South, a little busy jet as well. You get some really good screenshots of Volanta. I, I, just, I just enjoy it all sitting back and kind of looking at things go by. That's going to be a domestic easy jet fly in the UK. What's not the original, sorry. Um, what's the original creator? Who, who, who took this? No name. Come on. Um, yeah, so it's, it's all pretty standard stuff. So, to which I need to open up Photoshop so I can do, do my screenshot fixes. And get rid of the. Yeah, so yeah, we didn't do the classic shots. I need to figure out how you do the altitude intervention mode in the A320. Just let me figure that out. So we have to skip the. Uh, Skip the departure path. I'm sure there's like a altitude. I'm sure there is somewhere, something somewhere that I could select. I just don't know where. But I'll speak to someone and ask them like how it's done. Right. So let us quickly do screenshots and then continue our flight plan. Uh, so my first one planning A20 in about a week now. I've been very much focused on the uh, 737. Uh, it's a case of, again, remind myself the operation set crafts. Make sure it's in the correct order. I mean, got the engines on, we are airborne, and we haven't killed anyone yet, so I'm always doing something right. The seat belts. Well, through the weather now. Monitor off right it. Let's go through the uh, passenger routinery, shall we? Let's see. He was on board our flight today. So. Uh, it's a mostly full flight. Three empty seats tossed around, but that's the most part looking pretty busy. Let's go through the cabin, see who's on board our flight. Any names you recognize? Well, any names you recognize? You can't give us a shout, I'm afraid, because uh, this is not live, it's a premiere. So, if any of the names I recognize, I'll be able to give it a shout. Jasmir Dubanovsky. I'm going to Google that name right now. Jasmir uh, Dubinovsky. I swear that's an actress. Maybe not. Maybe not. No, it's uh No, fair enough. Not someone that uh exists, I'm afraid. So I swear that it looks so similar to the name of the actress. I can never remember the name, but it looks so similar to that. Um scratch the cabin again. Do you recognise? Saw nobody on board. So we've got Lewandowski's brother, <laughs> Stefan Lewandowski. Nope, not today. Not. Oh, I know. I know an Adam Green or an Andy Green. Sad not today. Nobody on board my flights. Like see, mostly four cabin. Only got two cabin groups, and it's just generic layout for the um, A320. At some point, I need to do like a proper A320 layout for um, Pack X. Yeah, if you have to sit around, we're going to be sitting on seats 20. Well, I'm on seat 22A, I believe. Again, I love the screenshot on the ground of the, uh, the aircraft stand, target position, ground crew there watching the process. Nice screenshot that, really, really is. Very proud of it. Hey, every, everything I've taken screenshots from makes it look really, really good. Again, there's no, there's no such thing as a bad, well, I tell you, like, there are such a bad screenshot to simulate, so people use default camera views and uh, hope for the best. Sorry, that's bad. Let's see, what else 
cool, Eurovision last night as well. The UK came second. We had that in 24 years, I think. 1997 was the last time we did well in Eurovision. Cool, I mean, we yeah, had a good song this year. Fair Play Sound's song was great. Um, Ukraine in the winner, of course. Public votes were very supportive of the Ukrainians. And to be fair, it was a good song. It was a good mix of uh, traditional Slavic um, folk and rap. Actually, no, the song itself was pretty good. I can't fault them for that. Did a lot better in the public vote than jury votes, but uh, honestly, it was a good show. I really enjoyed it uh, last night. Watch out for you guys on the um, IVO Discord. Definitely, uh, definitely one to enjoy. <laughs> Left the UK now, over the English Channel. Next uh, stop in the Netherlands. So yeah, I've got a few more screenshots to upload, and then those go to Mentor. Get some of the lighting is going to well. be really, really good. I mean, so I'll show you once I've uploaded, but some of these are fantastic. I think I've got another screenshot of the channel 10 minutes ago. Oh, that's nice. There's tons of retro livery 700, but. Okay, you're, you're on lower graphics. I can tell from the clouds, you're not on high graphics. This is medium to low clouds. Again, very, very nice. Got right now, of course, uh, PMD G700. The Serica Victors must be like the most flown Ryan aircraft in flights in now because. It's a 700, of course, the only one that's released, and all of a sudden, everyone's now flying it. In reality, this aircraft never even... That's a that's C-Series. What? Really? Oh, no, I saw on the Discord about that. <laughs> Is that a C-Series or an Embryo? Have I discovered something I'm not supposed to discover? Um, hang on, let me go to the Flyboy Discord. I'm going to ask them on there because they got the partnership with uh, Synaptic Simulations doing it. Uh, chat. I'm sure that's C series. I'm not going crazy. That is. It's not an Embryo, I don't think. Uh, virtual Call E175. I don't think that's the virtual coal. No, it's not. The winglet's a different shape. That is... Okay. Alright, it's a C-series. I wish it'd tell me who uploaded that. In fact, let me go to... Valanta. Let's have a look. Can we try and track down this aeroplane? Uh, H20 Neo. It's an approach. How long is this? It was five minutes ago. So it must be in the vicinity. And it just departed. Uh, also zero ZS, uh, ZH. It's BA forty six. Uh, section twenty one, three twenty one, section one seven two, next twenty Neo. I'm sure. Hang on, is that a Neo? And I'm being dumb. No, 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 that's definitely it's two series. Uh... <laughs> Hang on, is that P3? Is that a P3D screenshot? Hang on, I think it's a P3D screenshot. Yeah, no, this is this isn't this is P three D. It just looks too good to be P three D. Fair enough. <laughs> Taken aback by some doesn't even exist. Uh, Part two flight level three three zero now thirty three thousand feet. Well, three three five. Oh, 
started a massive conversation now in, uh, <laughs> in the Discord. So, um, yes. <laughs> yeah, sorry! So, 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 does anyone know some of this is Vlansar? I mean, I'm just, that looks too good. It's people, you can, uh, look at the ground closely. You can just kind of see the trim lines where the terrain mesh changes. That's, uh, that's not a C series. Is it not? Is that, hang on. <laughs> I'm gonna have to break the sound now. It is a 320 Neo. Uh, yeah, it's an A320 Neo from a, uh, from a suggestive angle on a platform that looks too good to be true. Ignore me. And I'll find some joy apparently. Seriously, from that angle, it looks. <laughs> and the, the, the uh, it's the uh, what's it called? The the visor. It's the windshield. Um, oh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> As for our routine, we're about two thirds way across the English Channel. Redlands starting to approach on the. Uh, woo. Uh, Netherlands starting to appear on the uh, horizon now. A few boats down below from that world ride boats traffic scenery everyone's got. Also I'm should I change the contrast actually most of the flights in they're not as good as it not as good as these I should know partly improvement partly kind of downgrades these are flat textures they can see just rotates but I don't know not not the biggest fan of them. They need to change them slightly. Because it uses billboarding which is stuff that they try to avoid in most flights initially but obviously they've gone back to uh back to using it. Same technique that explains their trees at the moment, so I'm sure the 3D trees will uh, completely change out as soon as X-Plane 12 releases. So it looks quite for X-Plane 12, that's not too far away now. Oh, that's the last time I ever, ever try and spot new aircraft in the Valanta. <laughs> it's, 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 it's the reason you but again, the livery, the Oh, the, it's, the, it's the visor, the shield visor that threw me off that one. It's like, that's not normal. No, it wasn't normal. <clears throat> Got me so excited. <laughs> Getting really excited now. See, look, look at this thing. Especially when it's in a small screen like that. It looks it's out of place. I'm sad now. <laughs> right, we have another thousand to go until we hit our cruising altitude. We get cruise for a couple of hours and then at some point soon we think about our descent. Well, at some point in a little while we think about our descent. We've got plenty of time to go and draw it up. <clears throat> and after that, I've only got to stick the video through a render. Make it ready for the uploads, upload it through YouTube, and do that all within the space of about three hours. So it's going to be a very tight, uh, tight release premiere, I think. <clears throat> Look at our ET at the moment. So passage goes around about an hour and a half. Atlanta shows an ETA right now. So at the time of recording, so right now it's 10:49. 
So, 9, uh, 9.49 Zulu, landing at 11.15 Zulu. So, we're looking at an hour and... an hour and 25 minutes for touchdown as the crow flies. This will be more accurate for the sim time, so... Shows an ETA of 19.08 into Zheshov. But I have like a new approach. You know what? Let's uh, new approach routing. So, flight plan. Uh, so it's around with 27. Ah, yeah, kill Zulu. Let's go through the through the charts. So, no growth. I want our plan as well. Our plan is there. Uh, there you go, the image that now, right now, November Zulu, now the motion 220. Um, so we are so down to the approach, charts list, runway 27, what's the difference? What is the difference? Different, sorry, uh, so that's coming in. That's, yeah, that's, that's the approach using into the um, actual wireless itself. That's not a problem. Just marks it as a. Well, both as, oh, sorry, they're both Zulus. I'm just being dumb. Uh, there we go, that's the Yankee. That's just, yeah, straight in and. Yeah, no, we're going to go for Zulu, I think. I'm going for Zulu. So, that prize uh 27 Zulu. And that'll be on the. Looks up to Bravo approach. Uh, via Romeo Zulu 713, and that's the. On the turn. Uh, yeah, Romeo Zulu 733 is coming via. So that's go to flight plan. We go down to plan mode and just go step by step up to the, uh, to the routing there. So it looks start, enter the start, south of the airport, so make that final approach. Yeah, that looks fine, so kind of bend around and then into runway 27 side. Perfect. So that's our approach configured in the routing. There's an aircraft just below us. 2,000 feet below us, 30 miles to our left, so they're kind of going away. So we won't be able to spot them. There is traffic nearby. <coughs> Could be this airplane there, I think. No, it's not. It's only 2000 below us. Maybe it's you? Yeah, it's maybe you. It's uh, West Atlantic, 7700. Sounds like a bit of a really. It's quite a long route there, 700. So, by. Also, plan to be 4000, and you raise her at 36. So, obviously, they have a step climb as well. So, heavy weights. Yeah, kind of on the limit of the 3 uh, century there. Flying over skip all approach. As we are flying over, I'm sending skip all right now. That's skip us the uh the aircraft flight to the most in the flights in the last month or so. I wonder why okay, M737s. Uh do I run I'm do run our operating stamps to them, I must admit I don't actually know off my head. Uh, yes, I do. I'm to skip off. They only serve Dublin and Malaga. So, only two destinations. It's not really there what they focus on much. Uh, yeah, that's no, fine. So, file 390, holding around 240 knots, which is Mac 0.78. Decent cruise progression. An hour and 20 till we land. So in terms of what I'm doing opponents at the time, going out there to see my grandparents, family I've not seen in about three years, 
Also, it's also helped me ID out there. That'll be one step closer to doing the passports and then with fresh passports. For me, it's an easier to travel because I have an inter European passport which lets me enter without having a stamp every single time. It means I start the stamps. My, uh, I think I've got, what, I've got 27 pages in the passport to fill. I have so far, in about six months of travel, filled, so since actually five months of travel, um, so I started travelling in January of uh, 22 into Europe again. I've filled. Oops, oops. Do not want to lose me a uh, health insurance card. Yeah, so I've got. So many stamps here, it's a really weird place. I've got one page just filled of uh, stamps now, no space left in there. I've got, uh, so got Napoli entry and exit, Amsterdam Schiphol entry, uh, Zurich. So, sorry, Nap I've got Napoli entry and exit, uh, Amsterdam Schiphol entry, a Zurich entry, a Zurich exit, uh, Paris Gardenauds train exit, Tenerife South entry and exit. Next page, I've got myself a Leon San Exupery entry into France. About halfway down, I've got an exit stamp for Leon as well, which is a really annoying page. Just get halfway down on the underground page. Um, and then at the very back, uh, because in. Well, Tunisia is an Arabic country, um, for them it's easier to. Because again, in Arabic you read from the back of the book, kind of upside down as well. So for them, it's actually easier. To uh, stamp the back of the passport because that's what they're used to, which I found quite interesting. I've got an entry stamp into Gerbazazis and an exit stamp out of um, out of Tunis. And I found it quite interesting because um, I remember I well I wonder why they stamped at the back of the book. And then after once I was in Tunis, um, Carthage departure lounge, I was on my way out. So I've got a guy I know who's um, Arabic as well, very good to talk to, very, very generous with his um, doings. But uh, yeah, I was like, oh, hang on a minute, I've put two and two together. Because in Arabic you read from back to front and to reverse, for the, the passport control, that's the natural way to stamp it. So uh, yeah, no, we, had, we had a bit of a laugh, but... Also, I find it quite interesting, it's kind of how, it's how they do things. You get it quite a few uh, few places in the world. But yeah, the plan is basically with European passports. One, it's open travel within the European Union. Two, uh, less stamps that I don't necessarily need going to Europe every every couple of weeks. But I will get another time today when I do go to uh, Ireland because, of course, it's uh, British passport travelling on. So I'll just read a quick message. Perhaps let me uh, let me reply to someone on on the browser because I gave out the other photos of last night. So yesterday I was on the. Um, in fact, so let me show you the photos as well because they are actually really really good. Um, so yesterday I took flights on a Dragon Rapide, which is a 1930s manufactured biplane. This was built in 1943, so one of the later models that was um, constructed. But there you go. It's a, a D Havens DH89A Dragon Rapide. 79 years old this aeroplane is, 79 years old, I don't think I'll ever get to fly anything nearly as odd as this ever again in my life, it's a biplane as well, I sat kind of towards the front of the wing there, but uh, no, the experience was something else, the experience was something else, really, really enjoyed that, uh, a few videos from near the departure, it's the departure and arrival, sorry, it's the, uh, it's the arrival. I think it's just general cruise. But uh, yeah, it was, it was a really good, really good flight. I know it was landing. Um, further uh, central London stairs, the, uh, there's the Tottenham Stadium. <clears throat> uh, there 
is so I've got the Emirates and former hybrid granite. That's on again. There, that's, uh, that's the Emirates. It's a bit hybrid used to be. Sadly, no Sanford Bridge. That was a big disappointment. I want my money back. <laughs> uh, fit the Houses of Parliament. As I'd say, look, Houses of Parliament with uh, Big Ben Clock Tower there. You've got London Eye just to the right. Uh, we flew over all of the uh, main bits. There's Buckingham Palace. There's the, uh, there's the cities, there's uh, there's the Shards, London Bridge Station, Waterloo Station, there's the Knight, uh, Gherkin, Walkie Talkie, really, uh, it was a Tower Bridge slightly cut off by the uh, wing, the, um, the strut to the wing, but you got H. Miss Belfast and London Bridge. Uh, that's Blackfriars Bridge and Blackfriars Station, uh, Charing Cross maybe over there. The Sanford Bridge is kind of there-ish somewhere. Uh, that, that, that white spot there, that's Heathrow Airport. Good view of City Airport, actually. City Airport we've got the best view of. Um, there you go. That's uh, London City Airport. There you go. So, London City Airport. The aircraft parks at the stand. There's the uh, Thames Barrier. The cable car somewhere down below. There's a cable car. Another cart. So yeah, really. Uh, that's Excel Center. Yeah, so really, really enjoyed that. Uh, one more screenshot on there as well. There you go. And uh, there is the Elizabeth Olympic Center. So there's the um, there's the Elizabeth Stadium. Now we're home West Ham United. There's that thing. There's the uh, and that's the velodrome. And then the sorry, that's the aquadrome. The velodrome is somewhere else. Let me just kind of blow us something. It was a really good flight. Really, really enjoyed it. It's nice to see it in the background again. That's the uh, go to arena. William Dome. So, don't tell you have to fly an aeroplane nearly as odd as ever again. The experience was definitely, uh, definitely worth it. Interior, so I'm facing it's not going to show the rest of it. A bit bumpy. But it, it was good. It was a really, really good trip. If you get a chance to fly it, definitely recommend it. It's, um, it's classic wings. Wasn't the cheapest uh, flight in the world, 229 pounds. But honestly, for the, uh, the experience itself, that was definitely worth it. Quite a weird looking plane, the uh, <laughs> the Rapid, I must say. Uh, they got a few options. You got uh, you got local flights around um, Cambridge, you like Newmarket. It's about well, 45 minutes, 179 pounds. Um, <clears throat> this one I went on, so 229 goes for a 70 minute flight. Well, 70 minutes approximately. Yes, you end up being about 90 minutes in the end because it's slightly down departure and then winds. But you fly over Central London, it's, 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 it's beautiful. And you've got a 20 minute flight, which is basically just departure, quick circuit at Cambridge, and then uh, an arrival. <clears throat> so I really enjoyed that flight. Get a chance to do it. Do it. <clears throat> right, how did flight progress so far? We are looking good. Aaron 20 to landing or so. 20 progressing well. We've got plenty of fuel on board, so I think we're going to be. Yeah, well, I've got three tons of fuel on board for the uh, landing. <coughs> Side planner is pretty good, so now I'm going towards Larry. It's 136 miles, which is what takes us through uh, Germany. This is the seat I'm going to have. This is the view I'm going to get for the uh, flight, so this is kind of what I'm expecting later today. Testing also, don't know if it'll be a sunset or not when we uh, land at Jeshoff. I mean, local time will be. 
so left centre, 19.13, so departing or landing at nine, quarter past nine in the, in the evening. Hey Google, what time is sunset in Zeszow, Poland? Eight twenty-four. So we will get sunsets on the uh, on the flight today. Yeah, as crow flies, nineteen oh one as you'd expect at arrival. Be nine, yeah, nine oh one p.m. Uh, local time. Give or take a few minutes for the uh, approach as well. So give, basically, give a few minutes. Yeah, so flight progression as well. No complaints yet. A fifty twenty is performing admirably. And it's nice to give it a fly again. I'm so focused on the uh, seven three seven as of late that it's nice to nice to try out the your three twenty. Cruising at Mach decimal seven eight, about four hundred seventy nine knots ground speed, four four three true speed. Given there's a slight tail wind of uh, thirty five knots, so the wind's on our side today. I reply to my message. See, look, 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 look at this view we got. This is uh, yeah, it's good by the propeller, but you got there's a shard, London Bridge Station, junction into uh, Charing, no, Cannon Street, that one, sorry. Junction then through to Waterloo East and Blackfriars. There's the Walkie Talkie building. Uh, there's Fenchurch Street, leading out towards uh, North East London. Tower Bridge. Got uh, Canary Wharf and Docklands in the background. City Airport kind of shielding the left hand side there. You've got the Millennium Dome kind of just behind that as well. <clears throat> uh, what else do I know locally? Uh, we've got Southwark Cathedral down. Southwark Cathedral, where is it? Uh, if you go down uh, to streets. There, so that is it, right there. Literally, my mouse on top of it. Uh, sure, it fell off. There's the uh, there's Southern Cathedral. Uh, HMS Belfast in the sea. There was actually a cruise ship there, I believe, a couple of days ago. World Explorer, something like that. There's London Bridge. Tower Bridge, London Bridge. Tower Bridge, London Bridge. Learn the difference. Um, <clears throat> I actually don't know what bridge that is. Just a bridge. Um, but no, so is that Southwark Bridge? Probably, because it's Southwark. Um, that's it, yeah. It's a lovely area, it's part of London. I do kind of frequent, I, I frequent every so often because a, if you're ever in London, I really recommend, I mean, you can either, you could start it at Fenchurch Street, you could start it at London Bridge, you could start it at Cannon Street, you could start it at, uh, uh, I think it's, ba yeah, Bank, is that Bank? No, that's, that's, the, that's the monuments. The bank is slightly more. There you go. That that's bank there, just behind the um, the engine cowling. But essentially, it's a really good walk you can do. Uh, so so. Oh, there's the city, um, city hall as well. Not there for much longer. It's going to be relocated to uh, Dawkins area. But essentially, you can walk along the river. There's nice, there's a nice boardwalk, which then becomes a heritage path there. You get to this bit here, which I will admit are the worst stairs in London because they're slanted at the sides, angled, and you have to walk up straight. It's horrible, horrible to walk up and down. Um, yeah, so up the stairs, make a right down London Bridge, cross the river, you get a great view of the um, Belfast and Tower Bridge on your right. You can make a right here, continue to follow along the river. There's a little cutting kind of where it goes green a bit to go around. Uh, at that point, you then have to go behind the Tower of London, so there you go, Tower of London. Uh, follow the path behind the Tower of London, all the way around, cross Tower Bridge, make a right down some steps, and then back down to the uh, boardwalk. It's about, you can do that in about 30 minutes, give or take a few, probably a bit quicker if you were walking it without stopping. 
But uh, yeah, you get all the classic, you get all the sites of the guests this part of London. So you've got the Belfast Tower Bridge, Tower London, Shards, uh, Walkie Talkie, Lon uh, Monuments for the Great Fire of London 1666. It's all there, all there. And of course, happen the circle line, go to Westminster, or do you bleed to Westminster from London Bridge? Circle line from embankments and this bit, I guess. Yeah, it's not. It's just a good little walk. Or take the boat. River boat. Uh, that's London Bridge City Pier. That is. Um, Tower Pit. <clears throat> yeah, London Bridge City and Tower. Yeah, oh, oh, it's part of London. It's a bit more historic, I'd say, than the um, the West. The West is all built up. The East, or well, Central East, is. Um... So, also, got to remember that the Tower of London itself was built a thousand years ago. Tower Bridge, a hundred years ago. Tower Bridge was built in the late 1800s built in the gothic style to try and match the uh, tower next to it of something because I've got, to, I've got to do a bit of work for a go and um, I've completely forgotten to do this again. Three twenty forming well, no complaints. We should get there, no problem. Hopefully, if things had a schedule. But again, front of real world flights. Make sure doing things uh, accurately. Have I got a screenshot yet? Answer is yes, I have. Uh, look around. What's that? It's uh, something three hundred, is it? Yeah. B3D, I don't know who's developing this one. Fair enough. <laughs> nice to see, you got a buzz in the background as well, so it's obviously quite modern this. Interesting. Is that, seven, is that 700? Sorry. Is that you? Hang on, who's in the screenshot? Uh, Jet Magic. Uh, Jet Magic did, and that's nice fairly nice to clarify, and also 700 for the MDG. Ether are getting quite busy as well. So uh, no three fifty pushing back. Got a virgin that's just rotating. But right now, this will be a PMDG seven thousand eight hundred and uh, sorry, PMDG. This is the um, level up or Zybo, or even the fault rates. Uh, seven three never know. <coughs> A nice bit of variety. In terms of progress as well, we're 40% of the way there. It's barely about to reach the uh, main point of the flight. Oh, I've heard of them. Never seen their operations. Need to uh, look at them at some point. No, 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 Does anyone fly the MD-80 anymore? The answer is yes, it's passing right here. So I have no screenshots, but uh, Copenhagen to Tondheim, very nice. Yeah, I really like the uh, MD-80. I think, I think it's underrated. It's not cheap. It's really expensive for what it is, I must say, but... Level quality, level diesel is really good. It's quite nice. A bit too much contrast, I'd say. A bit too saturated, not too bad. That's. Give you a light and see what you're getting at. Let's that one again. Yeah, I, I, I really like going through screenshots on my Vantar. And I really like uploading my own as well, because they're really, really uh, 
Good looking Microsoft Flight Sim. Nothing but clear skies all around. Look at the um, IVA whereby. So now coming through central Germany, we will be going through Newton uh, Radar. Munich Radar. Munchen, don't know why I mispronounced that so badly. <laughs> uh, 134, less than 14. Oh, hang on. Yeah, that's fine, yeah, not responsible for Innsbruck below 165. That's fine then. So, we shall be speaking to the exit. I thought we're going to be at the attitude above um, 230, but no, it's below 16, which they don't do, which is fine. Um, yeah, no matter how long. So, going to be a bit of traffic. We may cross over, well, we'll cross over with uh, this aircraft here uh, Oasis Virtual 320 Neo from Innsbruck to Trondheim. That's uh, your effects and thousands. Yeah, they'll be crossing in front of us quite, quite a bit of distance. We'll probably see their aircraft on the ND. Flight source going to Brussels from uh, Vilnius. So obviously, ah, is this a world tour? Yes, world tour. <laughs> Again, with world tours, you got a thirty-minute gap between the departure and arrival time. You have to do it within. And uh, yeah, so these two departed pretty much on the time of the uh, tour. So are they course signs? Right? They're the same call sign, no, they yeah, are quite different. Uh, yeah, you've got behind it's 320, 320, uh, 319, 319, 319, 319s. Right into, um, into, is that Krakow? That's Katowice, isn't it? No, it's Krakow. Uh, Krakow from Amsterdam Schiphol, 7700, of course, KM. Are we only fighting to the gesture for the moment? Probably. How come I have one or two uh, rivals? Yeah, one in about the sand steps. That's some arriving. Uh, so, about one hour to go now. Exactly. Inbound from Amsterdam, we've got a departure out to Sevilla. Apparently, American 77. Um, it's a uh, Hungarian Sky 320 Neo. Actually, helicopter. Interesting. Handy 4-2, in local around Prague. So, I like the images. They're not accurate in some cases. They are still working on the system. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice addition. Just having a think. Is there anything else I need to pack and get ready for tonight? I've got my, I've got my passports, I've got my uh, immunities. I'm not going to bring a camera or anything with me because I've only go for one night, for two nights. Oh, sorry, God. Um, clothes are prepared. Yeah, nope. I think I've got everything I need for this trip. I've got my train pass, so when I go back to the UK, I take the train back home. Yeah, should all be ready. So wind slightly changes now for us. Two four knot tailwind. Ooh, there we go. Told you'd be crossing them. Um, yeah, ETS has gone short by a minute or two. We got down to 03 a second ago. <clears throat> so that's uh, keeping an eye on them on the left hand side. See if we do cross paths or not. Really? Could anything around us activate using an IVAO? I 
genuinely never known that before. Um, a player coming in from Almar. I don't think I've ever seen traffic here before. Traffic or ATC? So that's the ATC. Got a uh, pizza back with Holland as well. Moscow also online. Uh, Show Mateo though. He was not active. Niji. Uh, Niji Tower. Niji Novgorod. Ooh, quite surprised by that. That, that surprised me. <laughs> Did not expect to play to see this part, but hey ho. There you go. Um, it's still got the no mention, no time over Ukraine at the moment. Only one aircraft inbound, 8 20, right now to Milan Zulu from Stansted. Which actually I find quite funny because this aircraft itself, no, it's not a hotel even like Tango. So, you still my flight to Jeff today. A couple of days ago, actually, in fact, yesterday, they did a flight into um, Tampere, which is my destination when I go to um, Finland in July. <laughs> yesterday, Tampere, today, Jeshov. What it needs is a flight to um, La Pendranta to complete the circle. But yeah, I'm not flying direct with Ryan now, I'm flying via um, Oslo because the dates that Ryanair fly to Tampere are not quite what I need. So, so let's see if I'm active right now, let's have a quick look. Yes, so right now I'm flying from Sofia to Stansted. So got Sofia run, then Shannon run, and then uh, back to, to Munich. Uh, and yeah, the London. So that's the aircraft right now. I'll be flying in tonight. Sophia to Sandstead. And it's got to do a short flight to Shannon and then back after that. Right, let's say hello on Munchen radar. We are inbound to Milbu. Milbu. Good afternoon, Munchen radar. This is Ryanair Seven Number Zulu, inbound Milbu at flight level three nine zero. Ryanair Seven Number Zulu, hello to you. Identified Squawk Seven Six Two Three. Squawk Seven Six Two Three for Ryanair Seven Number Zulu. All transmitted. They'll be able to see us quite easily. See, we'll be flying over Munich. So, they'll take us up to the Polish border. So, that's when we hit the. Uh, actually, it's the next waypoint. So, well, Milgu, then to Lassis. Lassis is the uh, border transition. So, that's the map. Whoops. That part, which is essentially our flight path. But, Milgu, see. Dips slightly south a bit, then carries on. Mulgoo just keeps it in. Munich, uh, Munich control. The only real city you can find on this part of the fight is uh, Leipzig, which we talk south. Apart from that, you can kind of, well, be quiet for the next uh, couple of minutes.
we're over halfway there now. Top of the scent is in approximately. Cherry top scent, that's a good thing to calculate, let's say. Uh, top scent, so top drop, uh, 1849 Zulu. Time right now is 1810. Really? Hey, sorry, that is, that is a UTT block, ignore me. Oh, uh, yeah, so we've got a half an hour top of sense at the moment, that's fine. Pipeline approach routing. What I can do is get the winds all calculated. That was done under the translation, winds temperature. That was climb, that was cruise. Another scent winds. So, uh, go to flight plan. Head out to the winds page, which is that. So, top of the drop, 390, and then levels at 200 and 100 for the descents. So, at 390, it's 287 at 14. That's 390, followed by 304 at 26. At 200. 30525. That's at 100. So you that. Uh, yeah, that's all fine. The next phase, this will be the. Okay, just go back to the internet, that's fine then. So that's cruise winds at the moment. That's all good. Um. Oh, sorry, alternative, that's the alternative um, airport winds. Right, the winds at. Uh, Where's the last alternative? <laughs> um, Warsaw, Echo Papa, Whiskey Alpha. So if we go back to the menu, do another weather update. Uh, Echo Papa, Whiskey Alpha. I must well speak to passengers as well, so I'll print out weather sheets. And then we'll get that all uh, plugged in. Give passengers an update on the weather. Progress. What am I doing? I haven't even printed out yet. Uh, to receive. Received it. I print that. Now you go to. Romeo, Romeo Echo, hello, that. identified. Line, flight level 100. Cool, so, um. Chapman Air Force 867, Unicom, choose. 290 at 12. Unicom 25, Chapman Air Force 867, Dagger Fence, Service, Chapman Air Force 867. Keep the Alright, that's all good. That's all good. Perfect. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, a quick update from the flight stack. We're just over halfway there to just now, so I'll give you an update on the weather. At the moment, it's still around 18 degrees centigrade with some clouds, but not too bad in terms of the arrival. A little bit breezy, around 14 mile per hour winds on the arrival, but shouldn't cause any problems on the way down as we come into land on the runway to send the side. So we need to fly south of the city itself, around the city, way north again, and make our approach into land. We hope you enjoyed what so far. Once again, just over halfway there, giving updates as we're closer to our destination. Thank you for flying. Camera made it uniform at all, I identified. So top of the, actually, top center indicator now visible on the map there. That's uh, a good sign that we're making good progress. Right there. There we go, packets to finally catch up. Public address, general, let's take it in the back. Delta Echo, Crouch Delta Romeo Echo, you can proceed direct upwards. Okay, it's such a small little add-on, but it just adds adds so much to your flights. <laughs> so little, nothing special about it, but it just 
just add stuff. So I like using it. Really, really good at what it does. I'm not just going to throw my emails yet today, so I need to make sure I've got nothing that I've missed. Uh, nothing looks okay. Uh, I guess I'll run two of them about paper for the strikes. That looks good. Done all the flight check ins, that's all good. Central London again. <laughs> I just can't stop looking. It's so so good. There's the landing. There's the landing. There's the landing. Quite not the best for Facebook. It has got press there a little bit. The uh, actually, is that still? Hang on. Ouch. There you go. Touchdown. It's a tail dragger, so it's a case of balancing it also on the runway as well. That was really, really good flights. So here's takeoff. See the quality of this one? Fantastic. What happened to the other video? This is 480p. It's really good 480. Yeah, it makes use of um, two de Havilland's Gypsy King 3 engines uh, on the. Yeah, I've not repeat. Very smooth takeoff as well. I mean, it's a biplane child drag, so you don't really quite feel lift initially. Aircraft just naturally moves the runway. Time flight level uh, 7000, quark 3460. It's quite close, I can get a bit, a bit dimmer in the uh, flights now, so sun's starting to set. This has an opportunity to increase our integrated lighting setup. Very short sleep, shall be flying it tonight. Fantastic uh, displays, I wanted that one. So, as soon as the sun sets, that's our lighting configured for nighttime operation. So, quite a high angle of attack on this airplane today, I must say. Quite surprised, you know what? Four degrees up, really? Is that normal? Turns gravity's not off. Of the front of the airplane, but it just seems a bit, a bit high at the moment. Let me go back to my performance. Can I reconfigure the center gravity? Probably not at this time. Uh, translation. Yes, yeah, not really any different to what was earlier, was it? 
Oh, well, that's not the end of the world. It's just really, a really strangely high level attack, which I don't normally see in a 320. Yeah, it's gonna be a sunset flight, it's gonna be quite uh, quite pretty of course. Move up ahead as well. This, this is nice, this is relaxing, this is soothing. <laughs> I mean, what I'm going to do on the flight, I'm going to watch um, a recording of Peter Pan Goes Wrong uh, from Mischief. I've seen I've seen uh, the show that goes wrong, sorry, I've seen, I've seen Magic Goes Wrong. I'm going to see the show that goes wrong in June. I'm going to go to Manchester when I have the original cast back, which I'm very excited for. Uh, so that's booking for June. And yeah, just overall, should be a pretty good couple of trips. That's. I think I'll watch the video as well. Make sure I see my. Oh, yes. Definitely. <laughs> uh, plenty of time on cruise. So, it's, it's not bad to on the airplane. Right now. It's in Germany. Actually, it's not too far south from where we are. We're about here right now. <laughs> so, yeah, you're also on your way to uh, Sandstead. For some reason, apparently the nose from Shannon Sands, I don't know, you're missing a hop there, definitely, because... Yeah, because it's just not scheduled as such, the aeroplane then, uh, FR-108, which is scheduled for... We might tango. FR-107, we'll have it shed... Oh, sorry, uh, 108, 109, perhaps? There you go, yeah, so London Shannon, it's nose 320, but I don't know which aeroplane yet, so it will be that one. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm gonna go to Tampere, I'm gonna go via Oslo, so I'm gonna go into Oslo. Uh, one, uh, hour not, no, it's actually like, it's like four and a half, four, half, four hours turnaround, or four hours stopover. I might go out of security, I might not, we'll wait and see. So flying with Ryanair from Santa to Oslo, and then flying with um, Air Baltic in A220 from Oslo to uh, Tampere. And at the uh, airport, I will either take a bus, or I might have some meeting, I don't know yet. So I've got a few friends out there who are going to see. Like my friend's uh, husband who will meet me at the airport. I don't know, does he drive? Actually, I don't know. <laughs> I know she drives. She drives and she drives. She drives a car. And I think she's got a motorcycle license as well. I must admit, I don't know. She she must be working. It'll be a Friday. Friday morning about six p.m. ish. We'll see. We'll get. We'll see when we get there. I'm sure Tampere has a public transport network. Actually, I'm know for a fact they. Uh, have a tram kind of construction as well. Alright, so very shortly we're about to enter the Bats Cross Border into Poland, so that's the last six. At that point, 30 miles to go, we'll then leave Munich, back to Unicom, and yeah, we'll just leave Unicom once to There we go. Off to Unicom, 1 2 to assimilate to Fry in there, 7 of them Zulu, thank you for the service, and good evening. 
to say thank you in German, but I just completely blanked it there for a second. I don't know why. Uh, I was going to say, uh, what was I going to say? I was going to say, um, I was going to say Guten Tag. No. I was going to say Danke schon, and then, um, I feel the same pops into my mind, and something else pops into my mind as well, and it just kind of, and, and yeah, I just chickened out because I was going to say like three things at once and completely mess it up. <laughs> oh well, Danke schon, uh, Munich Tower, you're great. Um, yeah, carry on with our flights. Sunset over Europe. That's quite a quick uh, descending sun, actually. My hands off controls. All of a sudden, that half the sun's now all visible. More and more of it appears. This is going to send a few seconds of this, right? <laughs> right. Welcome to Poland. Just inching over the border right about now. There we go. Welcome to Poland. Not been here in. Let's have a look. When was the last time I flew to Poland? Let's go through my kayak trips. Uh, so, that's me, so that's me doing the right, initial right now. Manchester, June 4th, Tampa, June, uh, July 1st, 6th. Um, oops. So, not in Embra. Go back. Park Hastings. See, this is 2021. This was all the UK domestic trips. Uh, 2020, apart from Berlin in October, that was like COVID. So I did one trip in March. Well, in the March was my last trip into Scotland, and then one last trip in 20. January, February was busy. I mean, here you go. Um, Last time, no, that's Finland. Finland going, so Finland 2019. Um, the first train, last train. Uh, so yeah, did in January 20. So actually, tell a lie. First trip was, I was in Finland, started the year in a foreign country. Um, then I went to Italy, Catania, Vienna, Paris, Oslo within January, February, or early February. Mid March went to Scotland, and then everything went there, well, down from there. Should have gone to New York in May. Should have gone to um, Mallorca in May. Should have gone to uh, Malaga in June. Should have gone to Poland in uh, like October, September, well, August, September time. Should have gone to Dublin in uh, yeah, Dublin books for it's quite early one actually. It was also later in March or early April. Uh, should have gone to uh, to Germany. Should have gone to Frankfurt in uh, books for June as well. I've had a few trips cancelled that year. Some Keynes, Venice, Greece, also. There you go. Last month's Poland was in March 2019. 24th of March 2019. This is the place I used to go to every single year of that failure. Yeah, because that's it. I went to um went to Legines, didn't I? Legines and Jeshov. Through uh yeah. That was a good trip. <laughs> so, yeah, just, so I did a day trip, I went out um on the bus. To Legines, Legines on the train to Jeshov, Jeshov to uh, Yaroslav, Yaroslav up to grandparents' place. Yeah, that was a good trip. Ooh, I need to upload onto the. Uh... To Facebook, don't I? Another group.
I don't post much on just Facebook group, but when it comes to all these historic flights, they are fantastic. Uh, right, that needs to be a takeoff video, which I hope I haven't deleted. I haven't, great. Uh, then it's. Bear with me. Bear with me a second. <laughs> uh, then it's some screenshots of London, so it's. That. Let's bring the original for that as well, can I? I'm on a group on Facebook it's called the Special Flight Enthusiast. Basically, it's a Facebook group for the people who post photos of rare flights, where I do get some of my ideas from. Uh, one video that I can't remember which one it is. That one. Uh, so that's three. And then it's more photo based, so it's going to be you, you. So much that one, that one, that one. Not that one, sorry. Uh, that one. Two, eight. That's ten. So where's nine? Uh, four, five, six. Uh, ah, hang on. Bottom one, there go. That's that. That's more like it. It's right, six, seven, eight, nine, and then ending is ten. I can't find the landing video. <laughs> There it is. Cool. Sunsets uh progressing quite nicely as well. I was missing thirty six minutes. Descent 130 miles away. So 1850, you arrive there. So we're looking at so 1824, uh, 1834 now. Uh, 16 minutes of descent, 16 minutes. Go the equation configuration once again quickly. So we're going to fly the Lux of 2 Bravo arrival, we in via 733, which gets us onto the uh, glide path. The uh, where is it? Performance. Next phase. Next phase. Right. Q and H one zero one nine up. Temperature reporting. Uh, Sixteen degrees centigrade. It has sorry. Uh, Eighteen degrees centigrade. Winds are three hundred fourteen. Uh, transition altitude in Zhezhov is. Uh, 6,500 6, really, okay, 6,500, <laughs> don't get too many um, off, set, off, uh, off thousands altimeters. Right, minimums today, so we approach, pass C, 781. The radio will be 113 feet. Four flaps landing, all looking good. Check the radio as well. Cheshire West, 110 to 1. 
uh, three zero, that's fine. Yeah, one zero decimal three equals two six four. Which is correct. One zero decimal three, one zero decimal three, one two six four. Stretch. No, I'm stretching the aircraft's in hard work. <laughs> I just enjoy the sunset, really. Okay, that does look really, really good, that. We're going to intercept the glide slope at an altitude of 2,500 feet. So we're going to very shortly. So it's sort of what's called about 10 minutes to go until we get hit that point anyway. So I won't rush into it. Starts our descent. Keep on the altitude on the way down. Again, nice to have been there functional as well. So we have to maintain our speed and that altitude without too much hassle. Bring the aircraft into land and then take it in from there. Just find to the south of um, Rotswath now. There's a uh, Rotswath, city in the south uh, west of Poland. It's the airport. Should I do the flight? No, is that the airport? Um, yeah, that is the airport. There's a flight into there not that long ago. Uh, in, 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 uh, with a level up in x -Bine. Like Gary was in the chat, kind of telling me, kind of well, telling me what to check, what to maintain, and actually what led to him then appearing as a special guest in that one stream with it in uh, Dublin. He'll be back in soon. He's on holiday at the moment in uh, the Canaries. He'll be back in soon. We'll do another video with him, hopefully, proper shared cockpit too. Pitch black, uh, and this I don't think it's going to be much in the way of lighting left when we get down to the ground. Right, 80 miles to go. Uh, prepare the uh, Unicorn for approach. Type arrival, EPRZ inbound from the west. We'll be on the Looks like two Bravo approach, runway two seven. <clears throat> no, that's approach. Okay, nothing else needs to really fit. What do I need to put in there? On airway track direct, whatever. Yeah, no need to put a situation in. Uh, which I probably could do. So you know what? Let's say we're on airway. Actually, on. 
direct at that point we'll be approaching Luxor Purchase level, flight level is it six five zero six five two thousand five hundred feet. Okay, transition there either. So top of descent, so potential traffic, frequency inbound from the west, top of descent, leaving three nine zero, taking the SRT Bravo wrong two seven. Uh so fair and oh, no, there you go, so yeah, traffic in out of the west directs um looks on the Sotty Bravo arrival for right two seven so passing through nine so that's sort of your comments. Basically gives you a proper message to send on Unicorn. Without having to type it all through, which case we click on send and then aircraft around you aware of your intentions. Fair enough. Some people call it a bit well, some people it's cheating, others call it <laughs> the best thing ever. Um, I, I, I quite like it. So, especially when I'm streaming or doing videos, it's something I can then. It's, it's one thing to focus on when I'm uh, doing these videos. So instead of communicating with, well, voicing comments, if that comes out, definitely give that a go. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's just one different mode of communication to to focus on. Contrails. I'm not the biggest fan of the new style. They're not great. It's not terrible, but yeah, the artifacts on the wing there you shouldn't really be able to see it from passive points of view. And there's our uh, screenshots. Rise day in London. Edge back on arrival. Yeah, really nice sunset ahead of us as well. Really nice sunset behind us even. Go it's 737 fever. Oh, just off here, 737. Down here, oh look, 737. Although well, that's uh, X plane and an 800, not a. Uh, is that even a 900? Um, yeah, no, so that's a 900. Is that not, Yeah. I don't know. The 900 has the two missing windows there. I'm fairly sure this 800 only has a single missing window. Could be wrong. I don't have a model on me, but actually I do. I have a Jet 2 800 model in front of me. Uh, Jet 2 model, oh no, two missing windows as well. Uh, it could be an 800. Maybe a 900, but I won't say 900. I don't see too many of those. That's a 737. <laughs> it's 700. That is a 77. Oh no, it's a 320, private. In Palmer, that's a 800. Marseille, we have an A320. Ooh, that's cursed. That is cursed. There ain't no <laughs> KLM 320. There was an Air France. That's nice. Beach craft looking at. That was a horrible photo. I'm going to have nightmares about that tonight. <laughs> I get a nice moon screenshot going. I get the uh, camera positioned right, probably. What's as to how far away the airplane can go from the uh, drone cam? Can I get the airplane inside the moon? Slowly but surely. You know what? I think we probably can. Hang 
I'm already up top of descent, so I've got to be careful about that. The answer is 40 miles, I've got plenty of time. Plenty of time. To be fair, oh, that would be good for screenshots. <laughs> this is probably really ugly. Um, yeah, no, that doesn't look. It doesn't look all that spectacular, does it? But we'll carry on doing it. No point in stopping now. Just because it looks horrible. <laughs> I've definitely done better. <laughs> there was a really pretty sunset right behind us that we're missing out to... Uh, oh, just on the... Uh, just on the tip as well. But no, 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 no. We're going to go for the moon now. We're going to go for the moon. Come on. We're almost there. Almost there. Just the wingtips to go now. Wow, that looks so disappointing. <laughs> Right, that's not a screenshot I think I'll ever be doing again. This on the other hand, it's pretty. Enjoy the last of the sunset while it's still there. Now, is there any way I'm trying to repair that uh, terrible moon screenshot on the face of so shot? Uh, let's have a look. I'll upload it. I'm not proud of it, but I will upload it. Right, 2,500 feet please. Should turn light, hold that. Forget the A320, the moment you press that button, it will straight away send the aeroplane regardless of what you set it to, so... No, don't send it too early. Hold it on for a little bit longer. Well, we dropped. We've dropped 60 feet. That's not a problem. Right, 10 miles to go. There you go, man. Let's do it now. Ladies and gentlemen, updates from the flight deck. We've started up sent into Zheshov. Uh, <laughs> whoops, <laughs> we'll get that camera out in a second, this is going to be very, very messy. I'll, uh... 
Let me land first, I'll leave that in a bit. So again, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, an update from the flight deck. We just lost our sent into Jeshoff and should be landing in approximately 25 minutes. If you need to use toilets, please do so now as we are going to be closing the toilet doors and sending the aircraft to landing very shortly. Um, apart from that, once again, weather talk around 18 to 10 degrees centigrade. Slide to pull down now, the sun has set. But a little bit of cloud, nothing too much ahead of us to worry about. Uh, so, start up sending to Jeshoff should be landing in approximately 25 minutes. Thank you. Now, unfortunately, we are not making use of any really fancy jets. We're using a mod to improve the airport's uh, data, but not using Javeki design. I always said to myself, I would never fly to Jeshul without Javeki design scenery. But, uh, nope, we got to the premieres, of course, and pre recorded videos, and their scenery is not out yet, still waiting for it to release. So, hopefully, we'll get to it at some point soon, Jeshul uh, from Javeki design. Their scenery is always really good, especially the post airport volume and family, so. Yeah, fingers crossed, not too far away. So on this occasion, the answer is no. No bueno. Uh, 1916, time is 18.52, so 16 plus 8. Uh, 26 minutes here. Yeah, we're a little behind schedule. Not terribly much, but a little behind. Okay, 2 hours and 7 minutes now. So far so good. of HC, nice and quiet here in the southeast of Poland at the moment. Nothing too much to look at at the moment. No traffic. The inbound to Krakow are hound us, but that's not a problem. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, just peaceful at the moment. I should go for 330. Passing through level 300 to 
continued since 270. Uh, let's grab the updated meetup for Cheshire from online. Ooh, hang on a minute. Why is everything moving all of a sudden? Why is Shvidnik so, uh, well, two aircraft, that's <laughs> pretty airport capacity. Uh, Fox House and Key UPS and uh, passenger, oh, FedEx apparently, and the 11 at stand. Fair enough. Uh, it's not a world tour or anything, it's just people flying from Shvidnik to uh, Helsinki, apparently. Um, a lot of water inbound from the south as well. Yeah, we're getting the aircraft expected to use on curve for a little while. Eighteen fifty six. Those of crow flies will be there in ten minutes. I'm not going to crow flies, we'll be there in about uh fifteen. It's actually we've kinda of caught up with well. Uh fifty seven to twenty one, no turn light. We're in about twenty, twenty two minutes landing. Do I have time to uh, actually do all the edits I want to do for uploading? I don't know actually. I don't know. Hopefully I'll be able to get time to stick this um, through the SDC just to stick the overlay and crop the intro and outro and that kind of stuff. But if I don't have time for it, I'm going to have to upload it straight onto uh, YouTube. Because I'm, I'm, so I'm cutting this fine in terms of timing. I'll get to the flight and that's not a problem. I just don't know if I'll be able to get the proper video set up as I normally do. I have to upload it raw for once. It's not the end of the world, you see Pack X, just take to, so the places I take to fly on track flight radar. It's the only difference, everything else is pretty much the same. It's just a nice little detail for the uh, the real world flights to make it more official, I guess. I won't have a return guide, so I'll fly back on Tuesday, but I'll fly back on Tuesday morning, so no one's going to be around to watch that. Aircraft two seven zero knots airspeed, ground speed three nine eight syndicated seven three twenty one thousand. Can't set it back by can you? Um what I can also try and look at is set up a Two seconds. Uh, that's the charts. Sans, uh, sans that's the Jeshoff. Uh, look of the H110 is more 6. So, the yeah, after the approach. There you go, 50 miles uh, tracking. Space slightly as well, a little bit on the bright side. Probably that one, that's perfect. Uh, yeah, a little bit on the side as well. Cool. See, got signs come back on.
parts, and they can lift that to the nukes up. Within 40 miles now of the airport, 38 to go, follow the approach path around, yeah, landing in Lesse. Space arrival 8 minutes, we are a tad behind, but it's not by much. Punctual from running in the background, ready for the arrival. So I'm going to tip this edge over below 250 knots, ready to cross 10,000 feet. What I could also do is um, draw a couple of fixes. If I go to fix info, I'm going to grab the reference as well. Um, it's going to be EPRZ27. Radius at 10 miles. Sorry, this is a uh, Airbus. Radius 10 miles. And EPRZ27. Radius at 4 miles. So this is some reference points for me to uh, have our aircraft in different configurations for approach and landing. When we get to that point, there's the runway in sight. We'll fly around that very shortly. I'm really good so far. It'll be good to be back. It's going to be good to be back. It's been too long. <laughs> Way too long. March 2019 I was last it. It's now May 2022. Three years and two months, my word. But to be fair, when I came in 2019, who knew there'd be a massive pandemic uh, that preceded it? I mean, nothing was really made until, well, nothing was said until the end of 2019, and 2020 already uh, went from there. Because again, I had Poland books for 2020, it just uh, never happened. Spoilers out to assist and lights on. Speed hold at two five zero knots. Alright, it's passing by 10,000, flying overhead, Jeshov. I've never actually been able to pronounce it, Jesh, uh, Jeshov, I've never actually been able to pronounce it properly, I don't know why. Uh, Jeshanka as well, again, never been able to, at least I'm probably playing it right, I just, back of my mind, don't feel like it's right. Uh, Jeshov, Jeshanka. Always have that uh, anxiety about pronouncing it. <laughs> uh, Jeshov, yeah. Maybe it's a good thing flying it in at night. I get to see the uh, 
horrible scenery. It's no, no Juvieki design this, no Juvieki design uh, in 20 into... I think it's actually my very first time actually flying into Jeshua from Flight Sim. Uh, yeah, last one would have been on X-Plane probably around 2019 actually. It's just been that long. Hold on, 8,000 really? Uh, sorry, 666. 666. Uh, 4,000. Okay, yeah, that's fine. It's going to be the uh, procedural approach. So once you hit that next waypoint, aircraft then drop a couple hundred more feet. So it's 8,000 at 731. And then 66, 435, yeah, that's fine. Sending airplane. Enough. How what? The green dot moved. The aircraft should just in theory fly the green dots. Go down to 4,000. So we're about 2,000 above where we need to be, but aircraft should correct it. But no, stranger didn't, uh, well, follow the tempo. Hang alongside the airports. Just a little bit of haze in the background, but nothing too much really. Either. Mm, inter interesting configuration there, 320. It's a little bit off course, that's not what I was expecting. Let's start set to one zero one nine up. Uh, correct, one zero one nine up. So challenge three twenty one flying overhead to uh sink it. Yeah, use a new flight pan as well. Is there not? Yeah, we're actually not too high. The diamond's only there. We're high, but it's not terrible. One. That's more like it. Spoilers armed. Medium brake set. Yeah, nice, uh, nice idea except for the runway. Let the aeroplane get itself um, onto the localizer. So we let the aircraft align with the runway first, and we'll also have to localize the mode. It's the. Messed a hard work for us. 
and just bring it into land, I guess. Right, up level three five. Drop down to two five. What's with that on the slide? But that might be much easier approach right anyway for it. Cabin crew, these people prepared for landing. Mode active. Just one eight zero knots. Uh, minimum approach speeds. We approach one three one. One three one. Yeah, minimum approach speed today. That's fine. Two. Approach mode active. Two thousand five hundred. Right, seven miles to go, get it down. One six zero knots. That's three. That's four. Minimum approach one three one. Right, what's going to do is cap and check. Get it down, three greens, brake set, spiders are armed, cabin secure. And that's our landing intentions. And checklist is complete. Switch over to hand cam. Lights on that perhaps. Lights not the issue, is it? The uh, coming. Okay, fair enough. Hand comes a little bit off today. Right, let's uh, bring it to land, shall we? One thousand. One thousand. Save the approach. Uh, 2500 is fresh altitude set. Correction 3000. Not quite deactivated, under control. It's 14 knot crosswinds, but nothing really affecting the aircraft at the moment. Hundred above, two hundred. One hundred. Minimum. Minimum continue. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Idle throttles. Ten. Five. 
five. Reverse is set. Hundred knots. Eighty knots. Six knots versus cuts. There you have it. Welcome to uh the Jesha of Shanka. Okay, to the right. Yeah, as a terminal, not as pretty as real life, that's for sure. <laughs> ah, Javik design. Now you release your scenery soon. What is down? Flaps up. And lights off. Tight lights set. APU starts. And we will turn off the transponder. I'm going to make way over to the terminal. It's only a short little taxi this. We're five minutes behind schedule, but it's not in the world. I think that's pretty much our behind schedule for the departure anyway at Stansted. So, by the time the is on time, just the uh, late out of Stansted causes us to drop a few minutes back. It's not the end of the world. We have landed without any problems ahead of us. Stand here, we need jet bridge because we are running out. Go for the stairs on the stand five for the camera to assist. If not, then we'll just have to pretend the stairs are out. We've got the rest of the ground vehicles here. And look at that terminal. Not nice, not nice. I said, I said I'd never come here <laughs> without Javiki design, but then I uh, booked a trip in real life to go. Of course, the premiere has to come first. So sad. <laughs> and this is a freeware mod because the default airport here was horrible. The layout was completely wrong, so this is an improvement. The building, definitely not. I've seen worse, I guess. Break sets. APU bleed on. Don't want daylight as well. Engines off. See that's off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Jeshua Flag Time right now. It's approximately 19 minutes past 8. Temperature side at 17 degrees centigrade. Some clouds, but no rain. Should be a nice and uh, simple departure of the airplane. We thank you for having Ryanair today. The opening board flight with us today, and we hope to see you again in the very near future. Cabin crew, disarm doors and cross check, please. Thank you for flying with us today. Right, so that's the uh, message going out to passengers now. We've got one last screenshot to complete edits. We can end on Balanta. Switch off the ground as well, don't I understand? I seem to try and call stairs over. Can we do that? The answer is stairs. No, because it's a jet bridge stand. I want a jet bridge to come over, isn't it? That's fine. Uh, off, off. That's all fine. Uh, so screenshot again, so enhance. Yeah, when in the ground service is not a problem. Uh, yeah, welcome to Jeshuf, I guess. Yeah, it's, it, it has been a good flight. It has been a good flight. The sunset's pretty good. The lighting, the colours, just everything worked out very, very nicely for us in the end. So, overall, brings us to what was a pretty successful trip. Again, 320 operates very, very well. Fortunately, I remember how everything works. There's no. Uh, no mistakes, no, well, I thought I could see at least mistake-wise, nothing I thought was problematic. And, uh, yeah, it was out to land without any real issues. Five minutes behind schedule, but five minutes is nothing. Well, I've been saying shot twice, apparently, that's, uh, annoying.
Right, so let's us finish calling the replay on the factual replay. We'll go to the replay in a second. We will reach at the cabin for disembarkation, but we'll just skip that straight away. So menu, and the flight time to report. So FR2136, F20 from Sansef to Zheshov, 2 hours and 2 minutes flight time, plan departure 19 past 27. So actually we were quite behind the arrival 24, arrival 30. 146 passengers, that's actually 92%, landing rate 167, we've got time at 2 hours and 16 minutes. Soft landing, other than that, pretty good from the cabin. Uh, going to the from IVO, thank you Munich for the service today. A lot of you aircraft kind of spotted, nothing major, it's not that we normally get. But no, overall, not a bad flight that, everything worked out quite nicely for us. Uh, check up Blanta for the screenshot, if you can, it's going to take your own time, is it? That's fine. Okay. We'll end the flights on the land to them. This works fine. We're going to turn power as well because they, as well, replays solar power needed to get the systems going. And yeah, in the end, this is what I did with that uh, with that screenshot. It's a moon. I guess I cropped it a little bit, but it's, this, this is not great. I had an idea in mind. It didn't work out. Pretty good way for a dark sky as well because the Green sky doesn't quite work with the moon. That's a nice screenshot. I like that one, that's very nice. Deep colours as well. Five people likes this one. That's the uh, approaching of the Netherlands. Five people like this one on the ground. Also, three likes this departure. Again, this is actually my favourite screenshot of the flight. I mean, the colours, the sharpness, everything that. This is this is real life photo. I'm sorry, this is not a screenshot, this is real life. And there's the operation to Zheshov from the cockpit. From the external. Yes, it's, it's, it's not bad. Again, when it comes to visual fidelity, Microsoft Flight Sim is always the best. Uh, so this is, well, this or the uh, the moon are my least impressive screenshots to the flight. So everything else is pretty good. Even the wing view. It's not a bad uh, screenshot that. Uh, I can upload. Oh well. Right, end of flight. Let's have a report. Oh, have a report. I forgot the replay. Uh, load the replay. Right, looks it from well, from my seat. The action's come up. So it's going short final on twenty two seven. Down at the uh, town below, you can see the background the way it gets a bit brighter. That's the main city centre of them um, itself, from the outskirts. I mean, well, actually, we're kind of well. Not, we're not quite in the Arasway. The Arasway is a bit further out. This is um, uh, look at the itch. Shanka is the village that goes on the uh, north border of the airport. So spot that from the right hand side landing view. See some dark cabin from the windows. Dim cabin for landing. I'm well, surprised they dim cabin for takeoff as well. Point to the. Uh, Packs uh, cabin crew. So it was like that dark out, but obviously they thought otherwise. Now through the main roads. That's when we're very much in a manual control of the aeroplane. Massive skyscraper tower there, that in reality is a um, coal mine uh, observation deck. No, the runway. Was it 1670 per minute landing? Uh, Quint of Lanta touchdown was. Hundred twenty six at zero point two eight G, so actually that was a uh, weightless in its landing. Passengers felt even less than usual. <laughs> yeah, that was smooth. That was really smooth. Also animations need to work now. Very handy. Right, let's have a look at the landing from the right hand side. Uh, should go a little bit closer to the ground, I think. Yeah, I'm way too far out. Okay. 
keeping it steady. There's the, uh, the flight training score. I've been actually since closed, they've uh, relocated it to the uh, north side of the runway, not the south. Because to get from the training school hangar to the training school runway, you have to cross the main runway, which is a great idea. Just touch down, there's your spoilers, there's your reversers. Just get a hand as well, I don't need that anymore. Yeah, and uh, pretty sad landing. Nothing to uh, say about that. Yeah, from a uh, landing year perspective. Oh, that's a stripe. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I was going to say, amazing should have been like that before. Rapid fire. It's getting two red, two whites. Bang on the glide slope. So the A320 is a lot easier to land than the, uh, the Boeing. Once you get used to flare law, it's smooth as can be. Also, not a very flat runway apparently. All right, the press of that. There's the flare. Oh, I flared it. Oh no, it wasn't a three pointer. It looks like a three pointer, but no, the runway slopes really strangely. Not like that in real life. I'll tell you that as a fact. Not like that in real life. Do one last thing from the uh, side of the runway. And we'll uh, pull it to an end. So, it's went with 300 feet above the runway. Spins the camera around, and there we go. Short final in. Nice and steady. Yeah, that's good, that. That was really good. Definitely one of my smoother landings in the 320. Can't uh, do so much wrong about that. Okay, back at the runway, and taxi to the stand. So, uh, yeah, yeah that's been the end of our premiere today. So, that was a flight from. London Sand says to Jezef Shankar, that was allowed a motion A320 operating on the behalf of Ryanair 3136. Uh, what was I going to say really? We've been playing for the next two nights. We're going to sort out what I need to do out there. Fly back on Tuesday, there'll be no video for that one. And yeah, I guess that's really it. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, do subscribe if you already. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon for some more flights in action. Take care, have a good one, I'll see you soon, bye bye.